I was the mother you saw last month in the video store, and my child was having a tantrum. I was the mother when my little boy would not sit down to save my life. He only wanted to run around the restaurant with balloons that he had absconded off a display. For you see, my little boy looks normal and is healthy. But the fact is, my son is autistic as well. His perceptions and senses are skewed. Now, though others may not be aware of it, he does struggle. He struggles against negative judgments and discomforts that are cast unwittingly upon him. Autism makes him a special child in, in our world. Before living with and learning about autism, I really never quite understood the term special child. Perhaps it's because his gifts stand in such stark contrast to his limitations, and it could be knowing how hard he works to understand and comply with our world. But I think what puts a special in my son is a gift of acceptance. Acceptance that I've gained by learning to know and to love him for him, and what a delight to applaud his most minute achievements. I don't know quite where they'll come from or if they'll come again, but I do know this. It's liberating to discover a child in the moment without judgments from yesterday or expectations for tomorrow. My little boy, who did not even call me mommy until his third birthday, gave me these gifts, and that is special. Hi, my name is Connor Copney. I'm truly grateful to be here and communicate a story that was ought to never be told. On April 19, 1996, a mother and father were told that their two-year-old was severely autistic and that their little boy will go to school to learn how to sit still, never to see their faith in God, never to drive a car, and college was a far-fetched dream. All efforts were declared futile. No amount of words can truly sum up how I am internally indebted for the love of my parents and for my community. Thank you. My diagnosis started as severely autistic with communication disorder, then roamed about the autism spectrum to finally settle with Asperger's. The doctors encouraged my parents not bring my diagnosis to light until I asked. They didn't want my problems to make me feel self-conscious or define me. I hold no ill will towards them on that regard. They let me pursue any endeavor from karate, swimming to soccer to feel like everyone else. But on Labor Day weekend, I asked why was I different and why did I feel excluded? Why did I feel absent while physically present? I learned the truth. No moment in my life can compare to how much I wept. Knowing how you may seem tainted and can't all be cleansed out, then in actualization learning how immense your support system is heart-wrenching. It was the first time I really saw the world through my eyes. I saw the reasons why the doctor's visits spanned all over the country in University of California in Palm Beach, Florida, on the other side of the states, to all the prescriptions and shots, to being hooked up to computers for brain training exercises, and to practicing conversations with the proper facial expression in the mirror. I know I'm so blessed for the massive support system I have had from family, friends, coaches, pastors, therapists, and educators. One of the most memorable support stories is from a teacher. The teacher saw good in me and gave me my greatest compliment that came with a greater responsibility to do things with all my being. And these words will always be carried with me. I want my son who struggles with autism to turn out just as you. <laughs> Still at times I'm much. I control conversations to compensate for not reading situations correctly, and also I'm a fairly literal thinker that gets me in more trouble more often than not. I don't tell people my story often because I don't want 
my diagnosis to be my sole label. I want my actions to speak louder than what anyone says and or thinks about me. I value my own moral integrity because I couldn't imagine people being actually able to see the true me. I dove into philanthropy so people can see my heart through action. But with Best Buddies, it can't be defined as a philanthropy or a charity. It's a program based on friendship. To be a kindred spirit for one another and to love in the simplest of ways by just being friends. When I first went to my Best Buddies event, I almost bawled seeing so much compassion and happiness in one room to those with intellectual and developmental disabilities. It reminded me of the support I received my whole entire life. And now I'm at a place where I can give support. Seth is one of my best friends and my buddy. He supports me just as much and more as I to him. We get to roam around Indianapolis from asking ladies to square dance and to having meaningful conversations in the late night. There's so many others who have it worse. And here I am talking about my success when I have damned myself in so many ways. First joining Best Buddies, it was to repay a debt, to fulfill atonement. I am broken. I am not a gleaming example of what to be. When growing up, I was explicably rude to those with IDDs. Once I knew who I was, I became ashamed for not making the most of myself. So when I saw others similar to me, it reminded me of my brokenness and I found it unbearable. So I pushed people with disabilities away. I used the R word to feel like others and to be accepted. This process of self-loathing led me to escape through many forms and eventually contemplate suicide. Now, I wanna take advantage of the time I've been given that others like me may not have. Initially, Best Buddies was a chance to help others similar to me to feel redeemed, but in return, it was the buddies who poured their love into me to see how lucky we are to be friends to see how friendship is fundamental to everyone and no one should feel excluded from one of life's greatest joys. Thank you all.